Guys, Tony Ferguson mengakhiri karirnya di UFC dengan kekalahan. Ya, pertarungan terakhir dan kekalahan terakhir untuk Tony. Pada momen interview Octagon, Tony melepas satu sarung tangannya usai berlaga yang berarti ia akan meninggalkan panggung UFC untuk selamanya. I don't want to retire. I really don't. But I love the UFC and I don't want to go anywhere else. So I'm not going to put both gloves down. I'm going to put one. And I'm going to keep the other one just in case. Bicara tentang Tony Ferguson tentu tidak akan terlupakan oleh rivalnya yaitu Khabib Nurmagomedov. Pertarungan kutukan itulah julukan untuk rivalitas mereka. Walau demikian, Khabib memberikan pesan yang mendalam untuk Tony pada pertarungan terakhirnya. It's not surprise for me because he is four years old. I just want to wish him all the best. He is, he is uh, truly one of the best who ever was doing in UFC. I just want to wish him all the best. And uh, his life just beginning, what I think, because he's just four years old and he just finished his MMA career. Now it's gonna be different life, much better. Pesan Khabib langsung tersampaikan kepada Tony dan sesi konferensi pers setelah pertarungan Tony juga menyampaikan satu pesan yang emosional untuk Khabib Nurmagomedov. Maybe you think that's cool, it's like a saga. You ever watch Dragon Ball Z, they have sagas all over the place. That's how that one went, McNugget Monday, so on and so forth. It's Wing Wednesday all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. So I want to say thank you, Khabib. Um, you know, I always wish everybody else the best, too. You know, no animosity with Khabib, but we went through hell and back. And it was the same thing with Russian fans. I mean, I think that at the beginning of the day, the excitement that it was for us to be able to go out there and compete regardless if it was chess, checkers, badminton or fucking grappling or fighting. Everybody just wanted to see that get done. So maybe one day we'll go and we'll do some uh, some maybe he'll pick his team and I'll pick my team for some wrestle ball or something like that. Khabib dan Ferguson tidak pernah bisa bertemu di oktagon. UFC pernah mencoba mempertemukan mereka dalam 5 kali usaha penyambungan. Namun semuanya berakhir gagal dengan bermacam-macam alasan. Padahal Khabib yakin duelnya melawan Ferguson bakal berlangsung seru. Of course, in, in prime, my prime and his prime, it's supposed to be a very interesting fight. But what what I can do? It was uh, he have couple time injuries, I have couple time injuries. It is what it is, you know. Sometimes we have plan, but God have His plan, you know, and we cannot control this. I've always tried to preach team. And for the longest time during the pandemic, I wasn't about team. I was trying to put together the band again and it didn't work out. It didn't sound the same. And it was like forcing the move, but I wanted to stay in competition. I wanted to stay fresh. I wanted to make sure that I could put film out there for Khabib so that way he would come back into competition. And we almost coached against each other, which is kind of funny, so it almost worked. When you're in this sport, you're in it for the love of the game. And when you lose that love of the game, you can see it in the athlete in their face already. There's, like I said, that fight went way too quick for me. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy. I'm gonna be pissed. As soon as I get back from here, I'm gonna probably have a piece of fucking pizza. I'm gonna enjoy my kids. Be the cool gentleman man that I can possibly be and tell them that they need to keep their chin fucking up and keep pushing forward. Because what kind of an asshole would I be if I fucking started feeling down about myself? love from the fans it was your first time competing in Abu Dhabi how much did you did you enjoy how proud was cheering for you in the real I thought it was really loud I thought it was awesome I didn't expect that um, I don't realize all the work I've ever done in this sport I think that uh, a true champion I think somebody wrote something down they're not they're not looking back on what they have done and they don't um, They don't, I don't know how to explain it. I'm not looking back towards things where I expect gratitude from people. Somehow along the way, they found interesting things about me to be able to inspire them, which you guys are all fucking crazy. I'm gonna be real with you. But I find that it's pretty awesome that you guys do do that. And I draw inspiration from every single one of you guys, from the fans that are in the hotel where I'm signing things and I'm taking pictures where I go to meet and greets where I'm doing pictures for five hours because I'm only signed for two. 
And yet I'm finishing every single one because I know how special that is for somebody else. As an athlete, a message that you'd want to share? Well, you're either born with it or you're not. And if you're born with it, you're fortunate enough to be able to pass it on to other people. And if you're not born with it, you better find a role model that has it and that way you can follow them. The hardest part is finding that role model. The easiest thing is staying busy and staying productive, doing the right thing. It's always, it's gonna be the easier thing to do the wrong thing. I guarantee, I guarantee fucking to you, it's always easier to do the wrong thing. The hardest part is doing the right thing consistently over and over and over. But as long as you have a role model in your life that you can look up to, and if you don't have a role model, go watch the movie Rocky. Go watch Kickboxer, go watch Bloodsport. Go watch Under Siege with, you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Uh, Karate Man, I forget his name. Seagal. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna be real, I don't really see too many heroes in movies nowadays, but like, I was, I didn't know my father growing up. I grew up fucking angry. I grew up real angry, but I had my, my dad, my stepdad, I didn't call him stepdad, I had my dad there that always pointed me in the right direction, knew how to coach me, and knew how to father me. He was my role model, he's still my role model. And how I work today, how hard I work today, can you imagine how hard my dad works? Now, I didn't know my father growing up, but I, I searched for him for the longest time, and when I found him, I wanted to know what I looked like when I got older. It's kind of fucked up. But I do now. And the coolest thing is for me to be able to pass a lot of this knowledge that I have to a lot of kids that are, that are fucking angry when they're growing up, or whatever it is, to never give up, find inspiration in what the hell it is, make sure it's, make sure it's good, and keep pushing forward, man. And once you lose it, find something else, find something new, and just stay busy. Gimana pendapat kalian yang kedua putarung ini? Tinggalkan komentar di bawah ya. Like video ini and see you next time.